for this section, we give several definitions of torque varieties. The main ingredient in torque varieties, complex tori. Now you're probably used to using tori as a product of S1s, of circles. So for a complex torus, we're just going to use a product of C stars. So we take the complex plane, punch out the origin. Now, connecting this to the previous section, okay, these complex tori, okay, products of C stars, these are going to have the structure of an affine variety by identifying this as principal open subset of Cn. Notationally, okay, we'll use T sub n, the capital N we'll hold on for now. So that's just going to be notation for later. In addition to being an affine variety, okay, the complex tori that we use, they're going to be abelian algebraic groups. Now, to be an algebraic group, that's going to mean we can define the group operations by using morphisms. Okay, we're going to hold on what morphisms are specifically. For now, that just means these are going to be defined using functions that are polynomials in the coordinates, or since we're using okay, tori, Okay, we're punching out the origin. We could also use rational functions that are defined everywhere but at the origin. Okay, so these are going to be morphisms, multiplication and inversion. Now our next ingredient, we need characters on tori. So since we're in the algebraic category, a character is going to be both a morphism, so defined using polynomials, and a homomorphism for the group property. To define characters, okay, and this will give us all characters, we're going to take an n-tuple, okay, this is going to be composed of integers, so it can have positive, zero, or negative values. Okay, the set of all these we're going to call the character lattice. Okay, later that'll be identified by a capital M. And then here we're just going to have a homomorphism in the C star. Okay, and so the idea is. Okay, if you don't like characters in group theory, you could just think of these as being Laurent monomials. They're monomials which have integer exponents, including zero or negative. Useful shorthand. Rather than writing out all the indices, we could shorthand this just by using T for a group element, and then we're just going to raise to the M that we're using for the tuple. Okay, and this will be real useful for later on. Now, Two important facts about tori that we'll come back to every once in a while. First, if I have a map between two tori, which is a morphism and a homomorphism, then the image of this map will be tori closed inside of T2. Also, if I have any irreducible subvariety of a torus, that's also a subgroup then that subgroup H will also be a torus. Now, in turn, all algebraic homomorphisms between complex tori are built out of characters. So if we have Tn going into a product of SC stars, okay, the way we get these, we're going to take S of these n tuples for the characters, okay, we'll call that set A, and then we're just going to load in each character into an S tuple. And then that's going to give us a map from Tn into C star S. Now, be convenient, we'll see it later on with the examples, to encode all the characters in an N by S matrix. So here, each M sub I we consider as a column. Now, to define affine torque varieties, what we'll do we pick one of these sets A. By fact one about complex tori, okay, the image phi A is going to be closed torus in C star S. To get an affine torque variety, we're just going to take this image and take the Zariski closure in C to the S. Now, that essentially gives us all affine torque varieties. But let's start with the general definition. So in general, Okay, affine torque variety, we start with T sub n a torus. V is going to be an irreducible affine variety that contains T sub n as an open subset. And we'll want the action of T sub n on itself extends algebraically to V. 
So that just means if we take the group action, that's given by a morphism. As noted, it'll turn out that all affine torque varieties defined in this manner are going to be one of the Y sub A's up to isomorphism. Now for the examples. First, let's start with a random example just to get used to using the A matrix. So let's take A equal to, okay, our character is going to be 1, 2, 3, 3 minus 1, 0. So here we're going to have, okay, two characters, three variables. For the first coordinate on our map, we're going to take the character 1, 2, 3. So 1 goes on T1, 2 goes on T2, 3 goes on T3. We get our first slot. The second coordinate, we're going to use 3 minus 1, 0. So 3 goes with T1, minus 1 goes with T2, 0 goes with T3, which gives us a 1. Okay, so we get our second character here. So we have a map going from C star 3 to C star 2. To get the affine torque variety, we take the Zariski closure, and we're not going to do it here for this example. Okay, so that's example 1. Example 2, let's take the A matrix to 3. So here we have one variable and two characters. Okay, so we have the map going from t to t squared t cubed. Okay, if we call these x and y, the relation between the coordinates is going to be y squared minus x cubed. Okay, and so that's going to give us this cubic in the plane. Okay, of course, as a singularity, okay, this is the real plane. And because we're having a map between characters, we're missing the origin. When we take the Zariski closure, all we're going to do is add back in the origin. This affine torque variety is going to be defined by the ideal y squared minus x cubed. Now, somewhat simpler, but a little bit more going on actually. Let's take v equal to cn. Here, our torus is just going to be c star n. Our a matrix is just going to be the identity matrix. So for our map, one goes on t1, one goes on t2 all the way down to one goes on Tn, and what we have here is the identity map between C star Ns. Now if we take the Zariski closure, okay, it's not too hard to see, the only polynomial that can vanish on all of C star N is the zero polynomial. Okay, what goes with the zero polynomial? That's Cn. So that's our Zariski closure. Now we can know, okay, well, what are we adding in here? So the idea is T sub N, Okay, these are just going to be all tuples with non-zero entries. So none of the entries can be equal to zero. So all we're doing is putting back in the zeros. So if we think about how the orbits are going to happen, okay, well, we'll have the origin, which is all zeros, coordinate axes, which have one zero, coordinate planes, which have two zeros, and so on. For a class of interesting examples, we have the rational normal cone of degree d, okay, where d is some positive integer. For the A matrix, we're going to take, okay, first row is D, D minus 1, D minus 2, all the way down to 0. Second row, we just reverse the order. So we start at 0, work our way up to D. Okay, note, check is if you add down any column, it adds up to D. This will give us a map from C star 2 into C star D plus 1. So phi sub A, carry ST to S to the D, S to the D minus 1 T, all the way up through T to the D. Well, we take the Zariski closure. Okay, we're just going to extend phi sub a to c2. So we only need to add two pieces to get all of the rational normal cone. So we'll take phi sub a on s comma 0, where s is any complex number, and likewise, phi sub a of 0 t, where t is any complex number. Now, the rational normal cones fall into a special class of varieties called determinantal varieties. So there we would take a matrix and then take determinants of minors. So here we're just going to take two by two minors in a matrix that's set up like this. Okay, so what are we doing here? Okay, I'll take x0, x1 up through d minus 1. Second row will be x1 through xd. And then we're going to take all two by two determinants. Okay, we take two by two minors. So they're going to be d choose two of these. For example, okay, if we do the first one, we get x0, x2 minus x1 squared cross this one out and take the next one, we'll have x0, x3, minus x1, x2, and so on. Then you can check with the coordinates from the characters to make sure that these actually vanish. Another example, okay, if I take a equal to, okay, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. 
Okay, here we're going from C star three to C star four. I'll take T1, T2, T3 to T1, T2, T3. And then here we have T1, one, T2, one, T3 of the minus one. If we look for relations among our coordinates, we note that we have X, Y minus Z, W. And that's gonna give us the Zariski closure. So we have the variety defined by this polynomial here. As a final example, of course, the torus itself is an affine toric variety. So here's the setup. We'll say a lot more about this later on. Now, for our next description of a toric variety, we need a little bit of abstract nonsense. This will give us the description of affine toric varieties in terms of ideals. This will make dealing with the Zariski closure a little bit clearer. Now to begin, can recall, image of phi A is going to be a complex torus. Natural question to ask if you're a group theorist is what is the character lattice? So if a group theorist knows the character lattice, he knows the torus. Now, proposition, if we have A, a finite subset of M, the character lattice, then if I take the Z span of A inside of M, sublast generated by A, the torus for Y sub A has character lattice Z A, okay? So the Z span of A. And then we'll also have the dimension of Y sub A is equal to the rank of the Z span of A. Now, okay, we're not gonna do a full proof of that, but we do wanna take a look at what's going on here. Now let's note, okay, the idea is gonna be, what do we have for maps? So if we take our torus, Phi sub A is gonna carry that into C star S. If I want characters on Tn, I could further compose with any character on C star S. So that gives a map that looks something like this. We have T going to, okay, we have our S tuple of T to the Mi's, or characters from before. Then we're just gonna take these and raise each of these to powers, multiply things together. So that's giving us characters from Tn going to C star. Now, abstract nonsense, okay, what's going on here? Well, I could set up diagrams. So the first one has Tn going into C star S, and we have as a go between the torus, okay, the image of the torus inside of here. Now, if we pass the characters, that's gonna reverse direction of all the arrows, inclusions go to surjections, and vice versa. Okay, so we get this here. M prime is gonna be the Z span of A that we're looking for. Now, with this, that means we have a surjective map from Zs into M prime, okay, Z of A. And with that, I can set up an exact sequence. Okay, so this exact sequence is gonna go from zero to L to Z to the S to M prime to zero. What L is gonna do, that's gonna capture all the relations among the M sub I. So if we pay attention to what's going on up here, okay, well, this is gonna be things that go, that are in the kernel, which means they're gonna to have to go to the identity up here, which is the same as saying, if we take the sum of the products of the LIs with the MIs, we're gonna get zero, okay? And so that'll give us the trivial character up here. Let's take a closer look at this vanishing condition. So we'll pick a little L and big L, because it's just an S tuple of integers. We'll split this into two parts, an L plus and an L minus. So for L plus, we just keep parts with positive entries, for L minus, we take the parts with negative entries and change their sign. So with that, we could write little l as a difference, okay, of tuples of natural numbers, and we'll form polynomials given as follows. Okay, and here, we're using our notation for characters where I have x instead of a t. Now, you have to stare at this for a little bit, but these polynomials are all gonna vanish on the image of phi sub a, and therefore they vanish on its Zariski closure. So they vanish on Y sub A also. That means, okay, that these are in the ideal for Y sub A, and it turns out that's all we need for Y sub A. So I want the ideal for Y sub A, all I do is we first find capital L, and then we're gonna take all possible differences with the L plus and the L minus. Note, it's more convenient to rewrite it in this form Okay, and then ideals written in this form we call lattice ideals. Now that means ideal for a toric variety, okay, these are irreducible, so the ideals are prime, 
and also generated by binomial differences. Another definition, a toric ideal, okay, it's just gonna be an ideal that's prime and a lattice ideal. And it's gonna turn out a third way to characterize affine toric varieties. These are just gonna be the varieties that go with toric ideals. So that's a third way to think of these. Let's run our examples through the process. First, let's take A equal to two, three. So if we're looking for capital L, we note, we have 3m1 minus 2m2 equals 0, 6 minus 6. So big L is going to be generated by little l equal to 3 comma minus 2. That gives us L plus equal to 3, 0, L minus equals 0, 2. And that gives the polynomial x1 cubed minus x2 squared. Okay, if we switch to x and y, that's our cubic from before. Now if we check this against phi sub a, Okay, we have t squared, t cubed. If we put those in for x1 and x2, we get t of the 6 minus t of the 6, we get 0, and that gives us the vanishing that was promised. Next example, okay, our cone c sub 2. So here a is equal to, okay, we have 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2. Again, l is going to be generated by a single relation. We have m1 minus 2m2 plus m3 is 0. So our little l that we can use is 1 minus 2, 1. So l plus is 1, 0, 1. l minus is 0, 2, 0. We get the polynomial x1, x3 minus x2 squared. Putting in the coordinates from phi sub a, okay, we'll have t1 squared, t1, t2, and t2 squared, okay, going in for x1, x2, and x3. And again, we see that we get 0 as promised. Finally, okay, another one where we have a single relation. Okay, we'll take, okay, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. The relation here is m1 plus m2 minus m3 minus m4 is 0. So L will be generated by 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. L plus is 1, 1, 0, 0. L minus is 0, 0, 1, 1. And so that gives us the ideal generated by x1, x2, minus x3, x4. Okay, we check with our characters. We'll have t1, t2, t3, and t1, t2, t3, the minus 1. Okay, so we put them in for x1, x2, x3, and x4. We see that we get 0 as promised. Okay, to recap, if we have an affine torque variety, we have three ways to characterize this so far. We have as y sub a. Zariski closure of phi sub a's image. We have the group action definition, and we have bitoric ideals. Okay, in the next part, we're gonna have yet a fourth way.